Hey everyone, Ryan with the homesteadconsultant.com here. I'm out at Love Farm, Tennessee, uh, working on the swales again today. And this is my second uh, of an installment of videos. So if you haven't seen my first video on how to make your own swales, go ahead and take a look at that video. It's gonna cover a lot of the information you need for swales, but I wanted to cover an additional option, which is a uh, DIY simple laser level system for finding contour and grading things that you may need to do on your own property uh, that's very inexpensive. So there's the option of renting uh, grading levels from a tool rental location, which will cost a little bit more than the total cost of the tools that I'm going to show you today. Um, they're going to be a better option overall, but if you want something that you can keep and reuse, this is going to be an option that is very inexpensive, very doable for the average person, but there's a few uh, little quirks that you need to know about it if you want to use the system. So here is my inexpensive laser level that I'm going to be using today. It's a self-leveling laser level. Uh, it comes with this other piece that you see in my hand, which is a connection so that you can actually, uh, it's a magnetic connection, so you can mount this device on a magnetically attractive surface. This can also be mounted to a tripod. Here is my laser mounted to my vehicle. Uh, you can see that it is just the magnetic mount there sticking onto it. So this is the unit connected to a tripod mount. I'm going to be able to set that right on my tripod and click it in. And then uh, this is then going to be pointing up where the swale is going to be. You can see uh, where I finished. And now I need to find contour going this direction. The next thing I'm going to need is just a cheap like $1 yardstick that I picked up as well. You want that laser pointer so that wherever you're starting on your yardstick, so let's say my hand right here is on contour and it's the first place I'm starting, you want your laser pointer to be somewhere somewhere roughly middle uh, but at least on the yardstick. And then you're going to either mark or just keep in mind what that measurement was. And I'll show you when I get to that point, a little explain a little bit more. But basically then what I'm going to do is keep moving this and adjusting uphill and downhill until I hit that mark as I go across the space that I want to mark contour. Uh, hopefully it's apparent in the video, but I'm doing this later in the afternoon, uh, late afternoon, early evening. So the sun's starting to set. That's probably the biggest catch with this system is that I can't really see the laser during full daylight. So I have to do it kind of at dusk. Uh, so it does limit the time of day that I can do this and it limits the uh, length of time that I can do it. So I have to do it fairly quickly, but I think I can make this work pretty well. So now that I'm up here and have my laser level in place and I've got my first contour line or my first marker where I stopped my la the last part of my contour line, I'm going to take the measurement on this. So this is the one inch mark down here. I'm going to put this on the ground. And my laser hits right here as a 25 inches. So what I'm going to do then is go to my next place that's supposed to be roughly on contour and check to make sure that I'm still accurate. So when I move it to here, my measurement is actually 24 and a half inches. So that means my line for contour that I guessed is uphill a little too far and I need to come downhill or towards the camera a little bit. When I come to there, it's 25 and a half, so that's a little bit too far. Come back a little bit, 25, there we go. So right there is my contour marker. So I'm at the exact same height across the distance from there to there, and I'm just gonna keep doing that. So I just wanted to reiterate how this works one more time. The uh, if the number reads higher than the number you marked, so the number I marked is 25 and the laser is hitting at 26, that means I'm downhill from where the, uh, where the contour is. So I'm going to have to move this stick uphill until it reads 25. And you can see now I'm right on that line that we ran earlier. And so that makes sense that that's where I had to go to. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but if I go downhill, I get a higher reading on my, uh, my yardstick here. If I go uphill past where the line is supposed to be, 
I get a lower reading, so I get 24 inches. So I've gone uphill, but that means the short the stick in comparison to where it's supposed to be is shorter. And so if I come back to where the line is, say I'm right on the line, now I'm at 25 inches again. So now that I've determined that that's 25 inches, meaning I'm at the right place on the slope of the contour, I'm going to go on to my next one and my next one and my next one. All right, that does it. I'm going to give a video of how this curves so you can see what that looks like when it's done. But you can see how it goes and curves a little bit back and forth as we go. And that's because we actually have the, uh, we have a bit of a valley. So yeah, this has to be higher up right here. There's a little bit of a valley here. And this is right where water flows consistently. So you'll get water that kind of con combines and comes down here. And that's a little bit of a valley. You can see where we've got a curvature right up there. That's a little bit of a valley right above it. Um, whereas this part right here is a little like a ridge. Um, though they're fairly subtle to the eye, when you start using tools, uh, you're able to see it better. So this swale will then follow the curvature of the land so that it never goes up or down the hill. It's all, this entire swale is kept at the same height. So I hope that gives you some additional ideas on how to find contour on your land. If you haven't already watched my other video on uh, building a mini swale, I really cover a lot of detailed information in a half hour video. I think it's definitely worth your watching. So go ahead and check that out. The link will be in the description uh, as well as hopefully on screen for you just to click and make it easy for you. If you need help with anything homesteading related, please feel free to reach out to me. My website is thehomesteadconsultant.com. My contact information is there. You can also see my services, my pricing. I try to be as uh, transparent as possible so that you know exactly what you're getting. I also do a consult for people, an initial free consult, if you just want to make sure that it's a good fit for you. So. Please check my website out, thehomesteadconsultant.com. Thanks so much for watching.